Hey everybody, welcome to Journey at Home. I'm Lauren and we're glad you're tuning in. If it's your first time, we'd love to know you're watching. So scan the QR code on the screen or go to newtojourney.online to let us know you're here. Whenever you're ready to join us in person, we'd love to see you at the CFSB Center for one of our Sunday services at 9 and 10.30 a.m. You can find out all the details at journeycalloway.com. Today, Matt's kicking off a brand new series called Masterminds. So settle in and let's get started. Do you ever find yourself fighting this ongoing battle in your mind? You know what I'm talking about? Like you want peace, but you're constantly battling thoughts of anxiety, or you want to feel confident, but you're overwhelmed by thoughts of insecurity. You ever wish you felt good enough, but then you battle those thoughts of inadequacy and you feel like you're never quite enough? Ever find yourself battling between thoughts of fear and thoughts of faith, between thoughts of trusting God and thoughts of controlling your own life? Have you ever wanted so badly to be confident that God was with you and for you? but you still had all the doubts that paralyzed you. It's pretty exhausting, isn't it? But it doesn't have to be that way. You can learn to master your mind, you can change your thinking, and you'll change your life. Let's talk about on this episode of Mastermind. Most of life's battles are actually won or lost in your mind. That habit you can't start, the one you can't stop, the behaviors you keep repeating, you can't break that cycle, your fear to take on a new challenge, or your inability to be vulnerable with somebody else, most of those battles are won or lost in the mind. Neuroscience has discovered this. It's simply confirmed what the writers of scripture have known for centuries. For example, somewhere around 700 BC, Solomon wrote this. He said, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. The thoughts that start in your mind determine the emotions you feel, which determine the actions that you choose. Your mind's the most powerful tool that you have. You gotta be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. For the next few episodes, I wanna help you learn how to win the war in your mind. And if this is an area where you wanna grow, let me go ahead and recommend a resource for you to check out. Craig Groeschel has recently written a book called Winning the War in Your Mind. It'd be worth grabbing a copy to dig deeper if you wanna gain some ground in the battleground for your mind. What I wanna do over the next couple episodes is show you that transforming your mind is possible for you. And the best way to grow is to learn from someone who did it. So we're gonna follow the transformation that Paul experienced and he documented for us in the letters that he wrote in the first century. Now you may think of the Apostle Paul as someone who had it all together and had it all figured out, that he was way more spiritual than you could ever be, but I'm just telling you that was not the case. Paul had to battle all the same issues we do. As a matter of fact, here's how he described it in a letter he wrote to Christians living in the city of Rome. He wrote this to them. He said, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I mean, you can see the battle going on in his mind, can't you? He can't seem to do what he knows is the right thing to do. But the things he doesn't ever want to do, he just keeps on doing. Uh, We can relate, can't we? That internal battle in the mind will wear you out. And if no one ever gives you a plan to win that war, you'll eventually give up and surrender. But here's the good news. Over time, Paul figured out how to defeat the lies that attacked him. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to let him show us how to do it for ourselves. Today, let me give you a couple foundational truths just to get us started. In a letter to Christians in the city of Corinth, Paul wrote this to them. He said, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. This was Paul's way of saying, people who follow Jesus don't have to fight the battle in their mind on their own. If you don't know Jesus, well, it's up to you and your own willpower to win this war. And as long as you try to do it on your own, you're probably going to end up with some very predictable results. But once you follow Jesus, you have access to help that you didn't previously have. God provides you with the power to change. And so Paul makes this very clear when he writes, the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. In other words, when you follow Jesus, you now have access to power bigger than and beyond yourself. You've got access to the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You've got the ability to tap into God's power to help you change. And according to Paul, 
He needed a power that strong because there were mental strongholds that he had to tear down. Now, that's not really common terminology for us today unless you play Minecraft. So what's a stronghold? When the first century, a stronghold was a military fortress built at the highest peak of a particular area of land. Military leaders might often stay there when they were under attack. Sometimes they'd put prisoners there that they didn't want to be able to escape. They'd reinforce these strongholds with walls up to 20 feet thick to make sure no one was going to break through. Once someone or something was in a stronghold, it was extremely difficult to get it out. So Paul's point is that it's very easy for us to believe the lies that Satan tells us about ourselves. And his goal is to build strongholds around those lies so we can't escape them. So they'll always hold us back. For instance, lies like, well, you can't trust people, or you'll never succeed, or you don't have what it takes. Oh, you're lazy. You're always wrong. You're never going to have a good marriage. You're always going to be alone. You're never going to be loved. Well, God doesn't hear your prayers. He doesn't care about you. You're never going to amount to anything. You can't make a difference. Listen, the longer you believe those lies, the thicker the walls of your stronghold become, which makes it more and more difficult to escape the deception and to let go of the lie. Now, science has discovered this is exactly how it works. Your brain's chemical makeup is actually changed by the thoughts that you think. Every time you think a particular thought, your brain starts to create a path or a road for that thought to travel on. Scientists call them neural pathways. There are billions of neural pathways or roads in your brain right now. But the more you think a certain thought, the more you think a certain way, the clearer, the smoother those roads become, and the easier it is for you to think that thought the next time. It's like the thoughts that you think the most create these interstates in your mind until those thoughts just become second nature to you. They become your default thinking. Or as Paul put it, they become strongholds. If you believe a lie long enough, you start living as if that lie is actually true for you. This explains why all of us are where we are in life. See, your life always moves in the direction of your strongest thoughts. It's why Paul says we got to figure out what the strongholds are in our minds, and then we need to demolish them, destroy them, obliterate them. The problem is we can't do it on our own. It takes God's power to break through those 20-foot thick walls that we've allowed to build up in our brain and destroy the thoughts shaping our lives. So how do we do that? Well, Paul tells us. He says, we demolish arguments in every pretension, every lie that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Paul's going, if you want to be free from the lies living rent-free in your mind, you have to do a couple things. One, you have to know what God says about you is true. You have to know the truth because the truth's going to set you free. And then two, you have to take captive every thought that isn't true and you've got to replace it with the truth. This is how you begin to tear down a stronghold. So, let me start by asking you this. What is one stronghold in your mind? Another way to think of it is to ask yourself, what's your strongest thought? Remember, your life moves in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So, what thought is most shaping your life? Now, we're not going to try to tackle them all at once, but just start by identifying one. Maybe you believe you're not lovable, and that's creating some identity issues for you. Maybe you believe you'll never be good enough, you've blown it so bad, you've never measured up, You've never felt the acceptance of someone you look up to, so you live every day feeling like you're inadequate. Maybe you feel like there are haves and have-nots. You're always going to be a have-not, so you're never going to be able to succeed. You just don't have what it takes. Maybe you believe you'll never have enough money. You've always felt broke. Your parents always felt broke. You just can't win with money, so there's no point in trying. I want you to start by identifying one stronghold that's shaping and directing your life. What's that thought that keeps playing in your mind over and over again? you got to figure it out because you can't defeat what you don't define. And then, this week, would you practice replacing that one lie with the truth of what God says about you? Because Jesus promised the truth will set you free. Truth is what God uses to demolish the strongholds in our lives. Truth is what allows us to take these false thoughts captive. Scientifically speaking, Truth builds new neural pathways, new roads, new interstates in your mind. And the more you think about the truth, the easier it becomes to believe it. You can think of it this way. Um, 
Next to our backyard at my house, there's a woods and there's a thicket there on the side in the woods. And if you walk up to the thicket and you start looking closely, you're gonna see these paths going all through the brush. And the reason the paths are there is because the deer have traveled that same path over and over and over again until they've trampled everything down and made it easy to walk through the thicket and stay on the path. Now, what would happen if those deer decided that they wanted to go through the, the thicket a different way? Well, obviously at first it'd be hard, but over time they'd wear all the brush down along the new path until that was easy to travel through. And the less they were on the old path, what would happen? Well, the brush on the old path would start growing back up until there wasn't a path there anymore. It would take time, but eventually a new path would emerge and an old path would disappear. This is what will happen in your mind, in your brain, if you'll focus on replacing the lies with truth. At first, it is not going to be easy to believe the truth of what God says about you. But over time, if you will choose that again and again, the path of lies will begin to disappear. The path of truth will be clear. So if your stronghold is that you're just not enough, you need to remind yourself that Peter wrote, God's divine power has given you everything you need to live the life God's called you to live. You need to hold on to that truth and create a new path. If your stronghold is believing that you're not attractive enough, gifted enough, well, you begin to believe the truth that you're fearfully and wonderfully made by God. You're his masterpiece created on purpose for a purpose. And every time you believe that truth, you're creating a new path. If your stronghold is that you believe you'll always be miserable, you'll never be happy, well, you just grab onto the truth that Jesus said he came so you'd have life and have it more abundantly. He gave us the truth so our joy would be full. If your stronghold is you feel like you'll always be alone, you can't count on anyone, you can't trust anyone, we tear that stronghold down with the truth that God promised he would never leave you or abandon you. If the lie you're believing is that you're a victim, you're always going to be a victim, well, you just let the truth that greater is the God in you than anything you face in the world, you let that grab hold of you. You begin to believe that you're more than a conqueror through Jesus who loves you, and those truths will tear down that stronghold. My point is you don't have to live your life in a stronghold of lies because Jesus holds the keys to set you free. So this week, would you spend a little time identifying one stronghold, one consistent strong thought that keeps coming up over and over again in your mind? And if it's not true, start building a new path by replacing the lies with truth. Your life always moves in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So if we want to win the war in our mind, we have to change our thinking. And when we change our thinking, we change our life. Let me pray for you. Father, would you make us aware this week of the lies? Make us aware of the thoughts that maybe they've just become second nature to us and so we don't, we don't even realize that they're on repeat in our heads over and over. Make us aware of them. Show us what the truth is. And then help us to begin to replace those lies with truth. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and for showing us exactly what the truth is about us and how you feel about us. Now help us to hold on to that and live from that. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in today. Before you go, remember to hit the like button so more people on YouTube will see this message. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of this great content. We'll see you next time right here with Journey at Home.